Hello, everyone, and welcome back for another episode of the Outdoor Adventure Series podcast. This is your host, Howard Fox. The Outdoor Adventure Series celebrates individuals and families, businesses, and organizations that seek out and promote the exploration of the great outdoors. Our guest today is Mary Forjone. Mary is an outdoor enthusiast, a freelance writer and editor, and she specializes in travel and the outdoors door space. Mary writes The Wild, a weekly newsletter featuring insider tips on the best of Southern California beaches, trails, parks, deserts, forests, and mountains. She loves tips and stories about running, hiking, and anything to do with the outdoors. Mary, welcome to the Outdoor Adventure Series podcast. Hi, Howard. It's so nice to see you. It's very nice to see you. And for our listeners, I met Mary at the Outdoor Writers Association of America's annual conference in J Peak Resort in Vermont earlier this year and just had a great time getting to know her and really learning about her work. And of course, you know, anytime I meet somebody new, I've got to get them on the podcast. So Mary, again, welcome. And so you're in beautiful Southern California. I am where, and one of the reasons why I stay in beautiful Southern California is because there is so much to do in the outdoors here and you can do it, you know, 24 seven year round. You know, I have to say, I did not really appreciate that you could do that. And even within, you know, assuming you can get out of the LA Southern California traffic. You know, and maybe you want to go right to the beach, but just to drive outside of the the urban area, there's lots of outdoor opportunities around you. Oh, my God, Howard, L.A. is amazing in that regard. I'm originally from the East Coast, but once I got here and started exploring it, I think one of the least best kept secrets, least known things about L.A. is it is a fantastic hiking, trail running, outdoor destination. And just like you said, it's not about the beaches. We're surrounded by national forests, Angeles National Forest to the to the north. We got the Santa Monica Mountains that go right down to the beach. And then you go east and you're in the desert. You're in Joshua Tree and Death Valley. So to me, this is kind of like my own little hiking paradise. And one of the reasons why I love covering the outdoors in this area is to get other people to see LA in that way. We're more than Hollywood in Disneyland. And there's just, like I say, just really beautiful trails out here. Fantastic. Well, now you have me very uh, interested in, in the, the one you did mention, the well, tomb you mentioned, Joshua Tree. I visited there for the first time last year, probably May timeframe. There's a gentleman I met via the podcast, Travis Puglisi, has a hiking service called Wandering Mojave. And he takes people out on excursions. And then Death Valley is a hop, skip, and a jump from me. And I just love, you know, when I'm not producing podcasts or coaching, just getting out of the Las Vegas area and into the desert for some hiking. I'm curious, how did you, you mentioned that you're from the East Coast. How did you end up in the Southern California area? Well, I came up here for a guy, believe it or not. And that didn't last, but my love affair with L.A. did last. And one of the things I did, I knew no one in L.A. moved out here. One of the things I did, I took a free hike in the local mountains sponsored by Sierra Club. And that really hooked me. We have Griffith Park, which just celebrated more than a century, where you could go hike. In fact, the Sierra Club leads night hikes there. I kind of got hooked on those. And boy, on a night hike of Los Angeles, it's like being at the top of the Empire State Building, you know, after hours, you see all the lights, you see everything. It was just so beautiful. How, how prepared do you have to be to go on a, for a night hike on this in Griffith Park? And by the way, I know Griffith Park only from songs and movies, I think, but that's you know. That's why that's why everybody should visit it. The site of La La Land and Griffith Park also is where the Hollywood sign. So ah. as you hike by day, because we don't like the sign at night, 
you get great views of the sign. You can hike. I need to hike out to the sign. I recommend always starting. Number one, you have to be somewhat fit, right? And you have to want to, you know, go hiking. So there are all kinds of, from beginners to strenuous heights, you can find a hike. Like I say, Sierra Club meetup, you can find hikes that way. But mostly, I really suggest that people go with a group to start. Finding your way and going with friends is good. As long as you have good navigation skills and good map reading skills and all kinds of things. But I think going with a group, that's how I got uh, started in hiking. It really, people tell you things, you learn stuff from others who know where you do. Once I started hiking, I got into backpacking. And so I recommend starting with a group. And there are all kinds of wetland hikes, beach hikes, mountain hikes, night hikes. There are just so many groups leading these activities in Southern California. Do you have a favorite type of hiking and a location? And you know, if you have this deep, dark, secret place that's your special place, you don't have to share it. You can perhaps describe it a little bit, but where is like, if you're going to have a guest and, and by the way, I'm, I'm a very opportunistic uh, podcast host. If I were, was going to visit Southern California as, as a mayor, I'm in town, let's get together for a hike. Where are you going to take me? Oh, okay. So if you are a moderate hiker, I'm going to take you to a place called Corral Canyon. It is in the Santa Monica Mountains. It is along, believe it or not, we have through trail. It's not like the Appalachian Trail. We have a through trail called the Backbone Trail. It's 67 miles long. You can hike segments of it. And this is just a beautiful spot where you look out and see the ocean on one side and you see these amazing sandstone rock formations on the other. And you get to walk through those sandstone rock formations and you'll just think you're somewhere else. And if you're a really super fit hiker and you want a real workout, I just love being above 10,000 feet. And I'm so excited that I live in an area where I've got plenty of peaks that I can choose from. My all-time favorite is Mount Baldy. It's 10,050. And I love that feel of being above. It's a really hard hike. It is east, probably about 30 miles of the trail. That is about 30 miles east of LA, above Claremont. And it just, it's like you're on the moon. You get above tree line and you're out there and it's kind of gritty, but the views are spectacular. So Mount Baldy is kind of like go-to training hike and also kind of elevates my soul. I just love being up there. I have to admit, I'm not in the best shape. I, I definitely sit too much. Uh, see, I'm producing these podcasts. You're standing, I can tell. I'm sitting. What I what I need to be doing is standing doing these podcasts. I'd be getting more exercise. In, in any case, so I, I would. You're in pretty good shape then to be able to do these to do this hike, especially up in the in the mountains there. Well, I I think that's the secret to. So one of my things is I absolutely do six miles of something every day, walking, running, hiking, whatever it is. And to me, that kind of keeps you ready for those bigger hikes that you want to do on the weekends. So I would say I'm in fantastic shape, but I'm in good enough shape to do everything that I want to do. Very good. Now, now I'm really feeling <laughs> envious. I, I had a, I had a guest on a couple of weeks ago and he does competitive biking and we were talking about COVID and especially folks who have uh, Parkinson's disease oh. and the, the, he has an exercise program for them that could be done virtually. And, and, and now I, I, I'm listening, as I'm listening to you, I'm thinking I have really got to get out of this chair. So thank you for that. I appreciate that on a, on a Monday morning after Thanksgiving. So you, you came out to Los Angeles. You came off for somebody, didn't work out. You discovered hiking. Tell us a little bit about your profession. I mean, you're, you've, you have, you know, the, the great outdoors. I mean, I, I think it's great. You enjoy it, but what did you do to make a living? Right. So I started out doing temporary work and doing freelance work. And then once I, cause I had been a journalist when I came out and when I discovered 
that really all I wanted to do was write and all I wanted to do was be in a newsroom. I think newsrooms are one of the most exciting places. It's where everything happens. But before social media, it was the place where you knew what was happening before anyone else. So I did that probably an old school thing where I kind of hopscotched my way to the Times. I started out at a very small newspaper, the Glendale News Press, Glendale, California, which is still there. And then worked my way up. I went to the Daily Breeze. I went to the LA Daily News and eventually wound up at the Times, starting out as a uh, copy editor on their desk and kind of worked my way into a writing position. I was thrilled about 15 years ago, the LA Times launched a section of the print newspaper dedicated to the outdoors. And I was the deputy editor. It was like my dream job. It lasted only two years. We didn't have the ad base to support it, but I gotta tell you, it was kind of a no brainer because LA is such an outdoors community, right? So then I just, I migrated over to travel, wrote about travels for years. And then truly when COVID hit, I think everybody in America suddenly discovered their wild backyards because I had never seen such an interest in hiking, camping, running, just, you know, being somewhere close at hand. Where can I go? What are the five best hikes where I can take my kids? Where can I go camping? So that has just been an explosion. So for me, it was a journey migrating from news, then over to feature side of the newsroom where I did travel for many years. And then now I get to do outdoors and really the wild, which is a LA times newsletter. Anybody can sign up for free. You don't have to be a subscriber is really the only voice of authority, if you will, in this area for outdoors news. And I wish we had more going on, you know, of course, other outlets occasionally cover outdoors, but this newsletter is all about, you know, what trailheads are closed, what wildfires are happening, you know, what's going on. And of course it draws on the best reporting from the LA times. Oh, I love that. And so I can just go out to the LA times website or we can get a link to provide the link Correct. in our show notes and we can sign up for this newsletter. That's fantastic. Yep. That's fantastic. Now, with your love of the outdoors and of hiking and running and travel, what have been some of your favorite travel destinations where you combined your writing with the travel and then the outdoor hiking? Well, you know, these are two things that come together beautifully, right? So things, you know, trips that I have really cherished did five days on the Inca Trail, ending in Machu Picchu. What an amazing experience. Went with six friends. So, it, you know, everything winds up being like a vacation and then it turns into a writing assignment. But that's okay. Also did the, oh, it's, it's a hundred mile walk that starts, that ends in Bath in England. And it was just lovely. Again, went with five friends, wound up turning into a, a, writing, a writing assignment. I have hiked in the Slovenian Alps, or what they call the Julian Alps in Slovenia. I hike just about everywhere I go. I remember I was on a cruise. This is a really my thing, but I was with friends and, and also wound up writing about that. At any rate, we landed at Gibraltar and I was just like, you know, I had used the gym when I could on the ship. I was anxious to get going. Lo and behold, there's a wonderful foot trail up to the top of the Rock of Gibraltar. So I was off and running and you see the monkeys that are all over the place along the way. And it was just a really beautiful way. Sure, the tour buses went up, but it was a really beautiful way to spend my time in port while I was in Gibraltar. Wow, that's fantastic. Those are far away hikes. I do a lot in California and I would say my absolute favorite place, do not ask me why. I go every year, I've gone just about every year for the last three decades is Mount Whitney, which is the highest peak in the lower, in the contiguous U.S. Of course, Alaska has all the big 14ers plus. So, you know, at like 14,500 feet, I just love it up there. It is thin air. It is, you know, you have to train to do it. 
Sometimes you can either do it in a day or do it as a backpack. If you do it as a day, I, it's 22 miles with 6,000 feet of gain at wow. elevation. So it's, it's quite a strenuous undertaking, but people do that. It's highly regulated. You need to get permits in advance, but I encourage everyone to do Mount Whitney because when you get to the top, you are looking into the heart of the Sierra and you can just 360 degrees. It's just stunning. That's fantastic. Now, as my listeners know, and, I, and I, I've already shared it once before, I'm a very opportunistic podcaster. So if you have some photos of you at the top of Mount Whitney or some of your hiking uh, excursions, we'd love to be able to share some of those Absolutely. within our show notes. So thank you for that, Mary. Now, again, the, the, this definitely there's this thread of, you, you know, you've combined writing outdoors hiking and and by the way i totally get that if if i could travel photograph venue you know places and and eat because i like to combine food i think that what a wonderful career i mean as you look back on your career it's like you really you know thank thank god the, you know you came out for some guy and you know, it's okay sorry it didn't work out but i, I think you've done pretty well i have just I have had just a fantastic career. I And the best part is as much as I have seen enormous changes in the newsroom, you know, moving over to digital, which when I first started in journalism three decades ago, I couldn't have even envisioned how much the newsroom would change and how immediate news would become. I love that aspect. I love that we live in the information age. I love that I was able to bridge the digital divide. And, and I, that's the beauty of this, Howard, is I still feel relevant. The, what the, the cornerstone of journalism and bringing news to people or inspiring people to get off their couch and to hit a trail, it's still there, just a different form and a different way. And for me, a much more immediate way. I love it. I never had, you know, digitally, I can have conversations with my readers who are like, oh my God, that trail was awesome. Do you have any other tips? And we'll discuss. I can do that in real time. Whereas, you know, back in the day, maybe you would get a nice letter from someone and you'd bring it to your editor and say, hey, maybe use this for, you know, the letter section. So yeah, it has been a great ride. I like to say it's been a wild ride. And I just, love continuing to do this and to have this relationship with readers. One of the things I'm kind of stuck on lately is something I vaguely call the extraordinary in the everyday. I don't know if LA is special, but I find people that are doing amazing, mostly through the wild, that, or I just find them on the trail, that are doing amazing things that are maybe just out of our eyesight. A friend of mine notched a quarter of a million miles on the same bike where he commutes to work every day, not typical in LA to bike commute. There was a guy who mapped every staircase in his Silver Lake neighborhood. And there are a considerable number of staircases and did a map so that people could either run it or do it. I mean, people are just doing these little amazing accomplishments. My colleague, Jim Rainey, just did a story on a hundred year old woman who is a master swimmer up at the Pasadena Rose Bowl Aquatic Center. And, you know, just how she, where was she on her hundredth birthday? She was in the pool. So I love bringing those kinds of stories to people because then we can imagine ourselves doing those things. You don't have to be a mountaineer. You don't have to be a, you know, so I like those kind of stories. You know, those kinds of stories would make for great podcast episodes. I think you should perhaps yeah. think about doing that as well. I know you and I chatted a little bit before we started. However, those, those examples you just presented, those are great short episodes to kind of incorporate. And then your audience uh, definitely will, you know, be available to a lot more people that haven't perhaps yet I'd heard of your work. I love that, Howard. Thank you. My pleasure. How, you know, I want to talk about a couple stories uh, that you've, you know, shared. Because, I it, mean, it the ones you just described you know, everybody has this, this little idea and they run with it and it's interesting, but you have written some stories with, you know, as far as 
really some folks doing some extraordinary things out in the outdoors. And there's this gentleman that had a spinal cord injury. And tell us about that. I, I just, this has been, this story meant so much to me. And it resonated with my editors because it became a big front page story. It is not a news story in the sense it's not a breaking news story, but it resonated with readers as well. I was hiking in Mount Whitney on August, as I do every year. And I was on the summit, I believe I was coming down. A woman flagged me down. And at the top, I had taken some photos and done some interviews, as you do when you're a writer, and introduced myself as being with the LA Times. A woman flagged me down and said, are you the LA Times writer? I said, I am. Now, I will say this, when you're at 14,000 feet, all you want to do is kind of get down. And I just thought, oh, I'm just going to give her my number. And, you know, she goes, I have a story for you. And I was just like, oh, my goodness. I don't <laughs> want to be working today. I just want to get off this mountain, get back down to my camp. She said, I want you to meet my friend Jack. And Jack turned out to be Jack Ryan Greener, who is just an amazing person. I met Jack. And unbelievably we perched on a ledge he was so kind because he was in pretty tough shape we were at like 13,500 feet per so ledge I got out my iPhone and I videotaped him and I asked him to tell me his story his story was that he was 25 years old he had suffered an incomplete spinal cord injury he was a quadriplegic from the neck down he could only move his toe and he with of course the help of medical to walk again and he had this burning desire his accident had happened about two years prior to hike up Mount Whitney as I was meeting him he and his five friends I call him the brotherhood of Jack who helped him get up there and saw him come down he took a very difficult risk he was on the mountain for like four days I am sure that these guys had never backpacked at elevation before and I was lucky enough to meet Jack when he had summited and he was coming down and he had fulfilled his dream. And that's the story I wrote. And it has been an amazing ride since then. We've done some TV spots together. A documentary about Jack recently came out about his recovery. And he is just, I have learned so much from him. And the one, the biggest thing when I was on the mountain that day was, wow, this feels really hard for me, but for Jack, who still has limited abilities, it was far harder, took far longer, and that was very sobering to me. So talk about the amazing in the everyday. He did not have a film crew. He did not have set up any media. He was just doing this for himself, and I felt so lucky to have been there and to be able to tell his story. That's amazing. And it really goes to show or tell us that everybody, if, if we stop and listen and just stop thinking about all the things that we need in our lives, what we want and our desires, but if we stop and listen to others, and I, I keep quoting Ted Lasso, you know, be curious, not judgmental, but be curious about what others are doing. And just be there in the moment. You, you you can't help but hear hear a great story. That is exactly right. And and it is incumbent on all of us, right? To pay attention more, to see those people and to honor their achievements. You know, I was just on uh Top Mount Hollywood in Griffith Park a couple of days ago, and this woman said to me, Will you take my photo? And the Hollywood sign was in the background. I took her photo. And she said, it's my 75th birthday, and I just want to post this to tell people I still got it. And I was like, that's amazing. I, I honor you. You know, it's a five-mile hike, 2,500 feet a game. She did a great job. So, I mean, all of those stories are out there. I love that. I love that. You know, I'm, I'm curious. Uh, you, you know, it's really funny this, this week. So we had Thanksgiving. We had Friday off, Saturday, Sunday, and I'm working on podcast episodes. I mean, we've, we lost our editor, so I'm the one that's editing the, the audio. And by the time I'm done with the episodes, I'm like, I don't want to go out. I go take a nap. I'm like, if, if I can make a living taking naps, I'd be a rich guy. 
but the outdoors is like right there and it's like it's like i need that kick in the butt mary just to get me outside and go you know be around other people which now my segue for that is what are those chance encounters that people have when they are out on the trail i mean you've just described a couple this woman flagged you down you met the 75 year old woman griffith park and what are those chances of encountering somebody that that results like in true love or perhaps in our head an opportunity for true love but you know maybe it works out maybe it doesn't but i have to think those stories are out there as well oh my goodness so full disclosure when i came to la though it didn't work out with the guy i came out with for i wound up marrying one of my hike leaders with sierra club and becoming a sierra club leader myself so i find that people you know maybe it's because la is not a walking city the chance encounters and the bonding that takes place on the trail to me is amazing. You are out there, there's like-minded people. I remember I was mentoring some inner city kids and taking them on hikes. And one of the things they said, you know, we were just in Griffith Park or one of the local parks. And I would say, hi, how you doing to all the hikers? And they're like, you talk to people? And I said, of course I talk to people. These are hikers. These are people like us. They're not scary people in the neighborhood. There are people who are out getting their exercise. And of course, we, you know, we would say hello and whatnot. I know a great number of people who have met their mate on the trails, which isn't the point, but it is kind of fun. It certainly changed my life. One of my favorite things, I wrote about this in the wild. There was a guy this past July who posted on Facebook this really beautiful love letter kind of thing saying, I met you in Trotunga in Norway a year earlier. We were both at the summit. I offered you a bit of chocolate. We walked down together and I felt so bad. I never took your name. I never, you know, Facebook community, can you help me? I think within a week he had found the woman and they were conversing. Now, she was with someone else, but she just loved how he remembered her. He, she loved how he remembered their encounter, how intimate it was. I mean, it's kind of cool that when you get to the top of a peak or, or just a pretty spot on the trail, that there's a complete stranger there to share it with. Maybe your mate doesn't hike. Maybe your friends don't hike or whatever. But there's kind of a ready-made person to say, isn't this great? And that other person to say, yeah, it is. I really needed this. And so there is this, I think it's a bond. I meet fantastic people on the trail. I get great stories. To me, it's, it's a place where we can just be. We're not driving. We're not going somewhere. We're not having to order in a restaurant. In fact, lately when I see people and they say, you want to get together? And I'm like, yeah, do you want to do a hike or a walk? I find that so much more rewarding the way we talk with each other than sitting in a restaurant or having a coffee. But maybe that's just me. You know, I'm thinking, Mary, I, I, I love Las Vegas. I, I mean, I went for dinner on the strip a Thursday with, with a friend that lives here. She's into the, the, the bands and the shows. And I was like, I want nothing to do with that. But get me out to the desert. I'm a happy guy. And I'm thinking, God, I wish I was just a little closer, <laughs> Mary, because yes. I would be, I'd be going out on hikes with you. We, we could go to Red Rock Canyon, which is near you, which is just beautiful. I, I just interviewed for the show, Erin. Oh God, I can't remember her last name. She'll hit me on the top back of the head, but uh, she's the executive director of the Red Rock Canyon Conser Conservancy. Oh, Lovely. I, I met her literally the weekend after we got back from Vermont is there was a outdoor film festival at, at Aaron McDermott. That's it. And I had, I, and I was walking around the tables. There's a lot of, you know, outdoors groups getting names and email addresses. And Aaron yes. was there and I said, I'm not putting my name on any list, but I do want to interview you once I learned she was the executive director and learn all about the Red Rock Canyon. So it's like, 
those little chance encounters. I, I love that. And so I'm curious too, right now you're still working, you're writing for the, for the wild. Correct. Does that include, is that to be included with your freelance writing or do you have other work that you're continuing to, to produce? I'm, I'm just starting doing freelance stuff because I recently left the staff position at the LA Times, though I am continuing to do the wild. So that the direction I'm living in, and you've really given me an idea with the podcasts, the direction I'm living in is those extraordinary stories just out of sight. I just love sharing LA stories with, about, again, to be inspirational or, or to be motivating. Plenty of us spend plenty of time indoors. And I just, I just really feel like there is so much more dimension. I mean, I think it's true of any city, but you know, my city is LA. There is so much more out there. Even if you just go to your public gardens, I was at, this is great. I was at invited to see in South Central LA. And I was like, wetlands in South LA, what? Well, they had, LA Parks had made this little pocket park. It was a very convincing wetland. It drew herons and all kinds of birds. And there was a little loop that people in the neighborhood could do. And that's when I realized, wow, the wild for many people is the park that they can go to down the street. And we need more of that kind of green space and more of those opportunities for people to realize, you know, okay, I don't have to, you know, the wild, the outdoors, nature is way out there. I don't have to plan a trip to Yosemite. I can go to my local park. I can do some cool bird watching. I can see wildlife. My goodness, there is so much wildlife. When I go to Griffith Park, I mean, pretty regularly see coyotes and owls. And to me, that's, that's part of being wild too, or wild in LA. You know, we, we just did a uh, episode with Jacob Deutsch. You might have met him at the, the conference and his thing of interest was this urban excursions that are just outside your back door that you can go on. And it's, it's a perfect, you know, segue for what you just spoke about is you, you never know what's in your, in your back door. And the fact that you found out about it, see, by the way, there's another podcasting idea is you interview the, the groups, the organizations that are spearheading those types of initiatives. So not only do you have promote them and their work, but you also, you have the people experiencing it. We have a group here. It's called Ciclavia, which I just love. Every month, they close down a three to four mile section of some neighborhood in LA. You can go, you can rollerblade, you can bike, you can walk, you can run. And it's just this wonderful car-free event. And to me, and it helps you get to know different neighborhoods. So you're absolutely right. Talking with, there are so many groups who are so uh, driven to get, to bring us outdoors, to get us moving in different ways than being in our cars. Very much so, very much. At the OWAA conference, what were some of your big takeaways? I, have, it's so interesting you say that. I love meeting people in sectors of writing that I don't do. So I don't hunt and I've met hunters and I don't fish. So I met a lot of anglers and it was so interesting to hear they have very loyal followings and they write for a particular, there was a fellow there, I believe it was from New York, who only spe specialized in upland birds. I'm trying to think of uh, like partridges or pheasants, things like that, who had a huge, who has a huge following that Instagram. So to me, that was really interesting. It, it's a world and a way of experiencing the outdoors that I don't normally hear and so much for them to write about. I also, I loved it. I met a woman who had just started snowshoe, who had recently bought and it does Snowshoe magazine. And she was talking about this mostly East Coast based. And uh, yeah, I like snowshoeing. We had some opportunities, although our, our winters are drier and drier, but we do have some opportunities here in the mountains. 
So yeah, I, I kind of really enjoyed different ways of experiencing the outdoors. Very nice, very nice. One of the segments on our show is, is we call it Insight to Go, and Outdoor Adventure Series was actually a part of, and it's technically still a part of it because we have a couple of little anomalies we have to resolve. But it was part of Success Insight, and we had this series called Insight to Go. And I'm, I'm curious, what insights would you offer to someone who they're tired of sitting home, playing the video games, watching TV, you know, that maybe they get out, but they're driving somewhere to, to get out. What advice would you have for them to take that next step to learn about, investigate, prepare for getting out to the great outdoors? Okay. I would, I mean, it's, I would just start simply, start very simply. Start with walks around your neighborhood. Everybody's got a neighborhood park. Start doing two miles, even if it's just on the flats. And kind of walking with purpose, not just like, oh, I'm going to walk to Starbucks and very slowly get a big, get a high calorie drink and walk home. No, what you're going to do is, right, you want to get your heart rate up. And you want to be observant. I live in the port of LA, San Pedro, and just on my morning run slash walk, I hear a lot of birds. So maybe I'm also kind of looking for birds or, or letting that fill my mind instead of all the things I need to do today. So I would start simply, I would go on a meetup or your local Sierra Club chapter or your local Audubon chapter or any, you know, there are all kinds of groups in your community. Trust me, nature preserves, state parks that are leading hikes for free. And I would go on a guided hike and see if you like it. And one thing I always tell people when they come on my hikes, if this hike was hard, come back, it'll get easier. If this hike is easier, you need a, you need a tougher hike as then I'll point them to other resources. So what you do is you start simply and quite honestly, you build up and pretty soon that two mile walk is just not enough. Now you're doing four miles, then you're doing five or six miles with some terrain. I just really think, I think it's all about the first step. I also don't discount urban hiking. I happen to lead a hike. It's called the Wilshire Walk, where you start in downtown LA and Wilshire Boulevard goes all the way to Santa Monica. It's 16 miles. We go through Koreatown. We go through Beverly Hills. You go past Rodeo Drive. It's fantastic. So Earth, you can really build up your endurance and whatnot. And it is no less uh, uh, valid than being on a trail. Also, there's a really popular book in LA, The Secret Stairways of LA. And those are awesome workout hikes. My friend Charles Fleming wrote that book. And I think it's the one book that most people say, oh, I started walking in LA. I got the Secret Stairways book or somebody gave me the Secret Stairways. And those stairways are some of the famous movie, Laurel and Hardy. The piano movers. I mean, they have a lot of history. And uh, so there's all kinds of ways to get out. My thing is start simply, find a group, find a friend, find a posse, and just go do it. You don't need much, you know, decent pair of walking shoes or running shoes, trail shoes, and you're set. I love that, Mary. And really, you are definitely inspiring me. I mean, I was inspired a, a couple shows ago. It's like, I got to get out, but now you are, I'm not even going to wait for the new year's resolution. Cause I don't believe in those, but oh, that's the, right. start now, start now, start now. I, I love that. And we'll provide a, a backlink to the secret stairways of LA in our show notes as well. That, that was a wonderful insight to go and a great question that we'll include in our, in the show notes and on our outdoor adventure series webpage, Mary, if our listeners would like to learn more about you and the work that you're doing, the, the, this outdoor, the adventures that you're leading or the organizations that you're a part of, where are the best places for them to learn more about you and to help get them started? I love, love, love hearing from readers, users, whatever we call it in the digital world. I'm on LinkedIn. 
under my name. I'm on Twitter under my name. I'm on Insta, Mary for Joe Types. And if you just Google the wild sign up, you will get all the past issues of the wild and you will see a way to sign up. So those are the best ways to reach me. As I say, I love hearing from people. If you have questions or if you just want to tell me your story, I am open to it. Fantastic. Well, we will provide the backlinks to LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, as well as to the wild. Right after this call is over, I am and and the recording finds its way to the cloud because I don't I don't tempt fate. I just don't do anything on my computer right after an episode. I want to go out to the wild and sign up for that list. And Mary, it's been a pleasure to have you on the podcast. I'm so glad we met at the conference for the OWAA and really, I mean, you and I are like neighbors in a way. I mean, I mean, it's uh, LA is a hop, skip and a jump from Vegas, except on the weekends when it, it was like an 18 hour, 18 mile backup Saturday and Sunday. And it's like, oh my God. But in any case, you're still close. So we'll f- figure out a way to, I, I'm going to work on the, uh, amping up my uh, resilience and uh, on the hikes, but definitely look forward to having a hike with you someday. Absolutely. Fantastic. Thanks, Howard. Hey, it was my pleasure. Stay on the line for a second. We're going to do a quick close and come back and chat. And I've got another idea for you for the podcasting. So stay tuned for that. All right, folks, we have just been chatting with uh, Mary for Joan outdoor enthusiast, freelance writer, editor, travel and outdoor adventure enthusiast. And really, I mean, the big takeaway lesson today, this morning, or a couple lessons. One is start small, you know, just walk outside, find a local park, walk the neighborhood and get out there and just take care of yourselves. Bring your family, your loved ones, Go by yourself, walk your dog, but, you know, just get out there and be active and you never know what's going to happen as a result of you doing that. And also the, this, this will, there's so much out there and available to us. There's, you know, we can put our, our cell phones down, our games down and really just kind of enjoy the, the great outdoors and the fact that you can also do it in a urban setting or settings around Los Angeles. I mean, you have LA, but then all around LA, you have the mountains, the desert, you have the ocean and lots of opportunity. And, you know, it's like when people talk about Las Vegas, they think of the strip, but little do they know just outside of Vegas, you have these wonderful outdoor areas, Red Rock, Mojave, Death Valley, Lake Mead. And so you cannot help but be active. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, just get out there and enjoy yourself. We hope you enjoyed today's podcast episode with Barry. You're going to find us on Outdoor Adventure Series, where this episode with Mary will reside. We'll have get some pictures from her so we can share some of those with you as well. You can find us on the podcasting platforms, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, Audible, and especially Spotify, where we have the Outdoor Adventure Series playlist. Okay, folks, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, go out there, have a phenomenal day. Go take a walk, okay? And we will see you on another episode of the Outdoor Adventure Series. Take care now. Thank you.